I think the worst is over in Burkina Faso. Uh, the RSP, the Presidential Security Guard, uh, which carried out this last coup of uh, September 16, uh, made a fatal mistake uh, and at the same time probably offered an opportunity to address the challenge, the problem of the RSP. Because as we have seen now, the entire Burkina population uh, was against the school d'etat. The rest of the armed forces and security agencies were resolutely against the coup d'etat. Of course, the position of the international community was not in doubt. The ECOWAS, the AU, the UN, we came out with a joint statement strongly condemning the coup. The ECOWAS summit met very quickly and condemned them. So there was just no option out for the RSP. The resilience of the population and their determination to, to, to get rid of this force has uh, prevailed. And as we speak now, it is by decree dissolved and uh, all the members have been uh, distributed to other units of the armed forces where they can uh, continue to provide service as professional soldiers if they will be disciplined and accept the rules. Uh, of you know the armed forces, um, and I think with that we have climbed over a big uh, hump, and the transition is back on on course. What we uh, expect now in the coming days is for a date to be fixed for the elections. The international community has already indicated. The Secretary General Ban Ki Moon, in a statement, uh, has indicated that. The UN will continue to accompany this process and to work towards peaceful and credible elections. My main preoccupation uh, will be uh, on the elections in Guinea, which were also incidentally highly contested uh, in 2010. Uh, the UN has been very engaged in Guinea, mobilizing other partners such as the EU, which has made significant financial contributions, but other partners such as France, the UK, Japan, etc. Um, and we work closely again with regional organizations, the ECOWAS, the AU. The main purpose to support a peaceful, credible process in Guinea. At the end of the day, we will also hope that when the results are counted, that uh, politicians will realize that with elections, they have to be winners and losers. This is the one game where there'll be winners and losers. I was telling a friend of mine yesterday, it's like the FA Cup, you know? <laughs> Even if it has to go to extra time, at the end of the day, there'll be a winner, there'll be a loser. So we, we hope politicians will understand this and accept the results and then begin to prepare for the next elections. I think one has to come with a certain amount of humility to, to listen to the protagonists, to try to learn from them, and just put in your, yourself in a position where you want to be a facilitator. Yeah, not that you have the ultimate answers. Nobody uh, has the ultimate answers, but we can always help to bring people closer to, you know, uh, and, and find a middle ground, whatever is dividing them. And I think that's what uh, the UN in these circumstances tries to do. Of course, we come with very strong principle to, to on the part of the UN you know, respect for dignity of, of people, you know, our gender sensitivity, the role of women and youth, uh, principles of respect for rule of law and accountability. And this is what guides us in whatever we try to do, to be just and to be fair. That means we have to listen to people, try to understand their problems, uh, not 
pretend to have all the answers, but always encourage people towards dialogue and understanding. Ultimately, that's the best way to solve problems. Violence uh, has proven not to be a way to, to resolve conflict. And even when you, whatever circumstances, push people to violence, ultimately, they have to dialogue to get out of it.